Hey, all my keyboard kung fu masters, yeah, sysadmins, I'm talking to you. It's Lex from PDQ.com. I'm gonna take you best practices for setting up uh, inventory in your environment. Now, that being the case, all environments are a little different. So I'm gonna give you some parameters, maybe a little math so you can get it set up for your environment. To do this, let's go to options, preferences. And we're gonna start at the top and work our way down, okay? With the ones that, you know, matter and will affect you. Active Directory, one of my personal favorites because I hate adding machines by hand. So Active Directory syncs your buddy. If you're using Active Directory, do this, okay? Set up that auto sync, okay? Now, depending on your environment, how often you get new machines, you know, you could sync it for an hour. I think that's uh, pretty aggressive for me. Nothing really changes in my lab that often. So I'm gonna sync it once a week, right? Every seven days, maybe once a month, right? But again, depending on how fast you've got machines coming and going, into your lab, or excuse me, your environment, you know, set that there. So that will actually, the nice thing is, every time it syncs, new machines come in, it will automatically scan those and kind of start getting them in your process to keep them up to date and, you know, the information available. Next, let's jump down to database. Another place where you can make a lot of good strides in performance, right? Um, optimizing your database, right? Over time, as you delete stuff out of database, becomes cluttered, needs to be cleaned up. This optimized database right here, that guy is going to, uh, you know, clean up uh, unused space, compress the database, keep it clean. Something you need to know about that. If scans are running when you hit that, okay, it will abort those scans. All right, the big deal, is it not a big deal? That's up to you, because you know, if you're, you can always kick them off afterwards, or if there's a ton of them running, maybe you wanna let it run, you know? But understand, when you do optimize it, it is gonna stop that background service. You know, we can't talk about uh, best practices without mentioning backups. You'll notice on the install, backups are on by default, okay? And they back up to the C drive of the machine you install it on. In this case, it's Guinness, right? I would highly suggest use a good UNC path and put it on a file share. So if the machine blows up, the backups don't blow up with it, right? You've got one on the machine to go get. Pretty simple, that's where you do it. Next, let's jump down to network. All right, networks, network environments. Everybody's, they're different, right? Some people have three, four machines. Some people have, you know, thousands of machines. And this heartbeat enabled, what that does, scoot that over to the side, or let me scoot it down. See this online, okay? Basically, we're sending out a ping. That heartbeat goes out and pings those machines to determine whether they're online or not. So that 300 seconds is the time in between attempts to go see if the machines are online. Where you can run into issues if you got a lot of machines. We're talking, you know, three, four, 5,000 plus, okay? So once every five minutes, you're gonna go ping those machines to see if they're on. If you've got that many machines, it let's just talk a worst case scenario, right? We can wait up to two seconds per machine for that ping to come back. Now, we kick off, I think it's 32 or 64. I mean, if you wanna be conservative, use the smaller number, right? at a time, right? So you do that, you divide that. It is possible to have the pings exceed the amount of seconds you've got. So what would happen in that case is the number of machines you're pinging exceed the number of seconds that you have available, right? So before it finishes pinging all the machines, it's gonna spawn another one. So you're in this kind of endless ping loop, right? So this is where you set that again. Once you start getting four or 5,000 and above, you know, I just bumped that up, you know, 600 seconds. A little more lag time in between whether a machine's on or off or not, but at least you're not uh, getting a call from your security guys with that constant ping. So that's where you set that. Uh, the next one down, PDQ deploy. Uh, we do, if you're using deploying inventory together, we keep track of deployments that go to machines. So, you know, let's say I'm deploying, you know, Chrome. It's gonna have a record of all the machines that deploy Chrome to by a machine, which is cool. But if you have a lot of machines and you do a lot of deployments, it's gonna your database is gonna fill up quick, right? I mean, now let me ask you this: How much of that data is pertinent to you? Obviously, is up to you. Personally, when I go back and do audits, I'm usually looking at the recent past, right? So, um, if you check this, it's gonna say clean up deployments that are older than 180 days or whatever day you set there. Kind of help keep that database clean and compact. You know, the place to do that is right there. Next on the list is performance. All right, computer scan timeout. 
Obviously, you don't want to send out scans and just let them sit there and run forever. So this one says if it's 10 minutes and we haven't got the scan results back, we'll call it, call it a timeout. Uh, same thing with this WMI timeout and then concurrent scans. Okay, concurrent scans, that's how many scans this is going to do at a time, at a pop, right? This one set at 100, okay? 32, 64, 100. That setting is up to you. Just understand what you're doing when you, when you increase that number, right? You're going to say, okay, I'm going to do 100 scans at a time. So it's going to do 100 connections out there. Keep track of those network connections. Keep track of the scans that are running. The more you do, the better a chance you're going to have to bog down a machine, or the machine, this machine, the console, in regards to having to keep track of all that. Um, so there's a sweet spot for your network. You know, do I get them all done in time? How much am I willing to, you know, run? How powerful is the machine this is on? So there's a lot of... Uh, Swag in that case, you know. So it's an, this is the art form, right? Kind of, you know, determine what you need. Again, the scans run pretty quick. So usually I wouldn't exceed 100. I mean, I, I really rarely have ever seen a, examples where that's necessary. But again, you, you may need it in your environment. So that's where you set it. Uh, the other, this uh, service TCP connection. I will say this. I like to disable mine, okay? It seems to connect faster to the machines. So I can get my scans back faster, that kind of thing. The thing you need to know about this, this is not just a PDQ setting, it sets it for the machine. So, you know, if I disable this for inventory, it's disabling it for anything else that's running on this machine. So just be aware, if it does affect, you know, you turn, you disable it, and it affects other software, you can just come back and set it to default or change the timeout on it. But that's where you do it. And then finally, let's just talk about scanning. I mean, this is pretty simple. I like for offline status, ping a machine before you try and do a scan on it. Pings come back fairly quick, which is nice. We send a scan on it, it's gonna sit there and try and run that scan. So ping before scanning is gonna definitely, you know, uh, you know, make you get through your scans quicker. So um, anyway, auto cleanup, 14 days, right? These are the logs of your scans and that. This will clean up after 14 days. I think that's a, a good idea. I mean, I uh, I rarely check my logs. That's me personally, but that's where you would go to look at your errors and things there. After 14 days, is it necessary? Eh, it's up to you, but that's where you would change it. So, all right. So those are the settings, you know, to optimize the performance. And, you know, hopefully we talked about some best practices to keep your inventory running yeah, optimally, or at least you can calculate how to get it optimally running in your environment. Thank you for watching. I'm Lex from PDQ.com.